Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today I'm going to be watching Iron Man and talking about all the engineering scenes that we see in the movie. Full disclosure, I am a huge fan of Robert Downey Jr., the Marvel Universe, and I am really excited to see Endgame. I've never watched Iron Man with the intent of seeing how accurate it is or not. I have been seeing it in the comments, and it's something that my friends have asked me to do just on the side. I'm like, could you build an Iron Man suit? Is it actually real or not? And now I'm going to be watching it and seeing how accurate this really is. What is that? That's palladium, 0.15 grams. You need at least 1.6, so why don't you go break down the other 11? Palladium is real. It's an actual element on the periodic table. The symbol is PD. What he was holding looks more like aluminum. Uh, palladium is a really, really bright, like super bright silver. That's the best way I can describe how it looks. I don't know all the uses of palladium, but I do know that it's used in jewelry quite commonly. I got a big one powering my factory at home. The shrapnel out of my heart. But what could it generate? If my math is right, I don't know as is. Three gigajoules per second. That could warm your heart for 50 lifetimes. Yeah. Or something big for 15 minutes. Three gigajoules a second. So giga is just short for something that means 10 to the power of 9 which is a billion. So that's three billion joules per second. A joule per second is a watt, uh, one watt. One joule per second is equal to one watt. So right now what that arc reactor can power three billion watts of power, which is a lot. I mean, three billion of anything is a lot, but the average incandescent light bulb requires 60 watts of power to function. So that arc reactor can power like 50, 50 million light bulbs and it's that big. It's very, very powerful technology. We know that Tony Stark is a human. I mean, he's a very, very smart human. Humans are not perfect, right? We take imperfect measurements to build imperfect tools, and then we have imperfect machines. Like, nothing about us is 100%. So that arc reactor, let's just assume that it's working at 99% efficiency, and only 1% of that is lost to heat. If it can produce all that power and there's just that much store potential energy inside of it i don't know how much heat that thing is actually giving off but i think that tony stark's chest will burn very quickly and he will die very tragically but i do let me finish this initialize the power sequence okay now tell me tell me function 11. tell me when you see progress bar it should be yes. up right now. Talk to me. Okay, Tell me I, when you see it. I have it. Press control I. 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 Got enter. It. Okay. I and enter. Come over here and button me up. What's happening here is like when he says initialize the power sequence, what he's pretty much telling Jensen to do is to begin the process of taking all of his programs from the computer and putting them onto the microprocessor that's in the Iron Man suit. Because you don't want to walk around like with that laptop hooked up to everywhere you go. You want the suit to be like an independent mobile device. And the reason that that's necessary is because the suit is not like levers and pulleys and gears. There's many electrical components to it. And this is what allows him to do all of like that fancy, really cool stuff is that the microprocessor inside and like the suit's memory has all the programs he needs. Having that super strength in the suit is actually very realistic. Uh, there are exoskeletal suits that are already being used in uh, factories and warehouses and whatnot. That literally just is like a harness that goes over your body and just allows you to lift really heavy things. Or if certain people are like medical patients and they physically can't move a part of their body, they have these devices that allow you to move in that motion. Building a bulletproof shield of any kind is actually, it's not very difficult, it's just very expensive. You would have to have a metal around you that's of higher density than the bullets that are being fired at you. 
So in this case, the bullets are probably going to be lead. So the metal that the suit must be built out of has to be higher density than lead. And there's many options for that. I don't understand why that arc reactor is just so prevalent in the design of the suit. Like you can see it from very far away and that's what powered everything. So if all those guys knew to just shoot at that one location in his chest and that cracks or that breaks, it's just like, it's not very powerful material that's holding it together. I mean, he's pretty much dead. So I would feel like you would want to cover that arc reactor with some protective layering of metal so that the bullet can never get into it. For Tony to launch himself into the air like that, the thrust produced by the Iron Man suit has to be greater than the combined weight of Tony and the suit on him. You want the upward force or the thrust to be greater than that because you're moving against gravity. So that's how you go up. That's how a space shuttle launches as well. I don't know how he's able to do that at all because in the space shuttle, we know that there's fuel being burned, which is launching the shuttle directly up into orbit. However, in Tony's case, he doesn't have any fuel. Like he's not burning anything that's creating that smoke behind him. So I'm not actually sure how that works. That's because the arc reactor inside of him is just a really, really powerful battery. And as we know from electric cars, they pretty much have zero emissions. So you wouldn't see all of the smoke coming from behind him. Oh, oh, oh. there's pus. It's not pus, it's an inorganic <laughs> plasmic discharge. It's from the device, not from my body. It smells. Yeah, it does. For one, that's pretty gross. Uh, for two, if if it smells bad, um, I don't. It's probably coming from his body. I don't know of any electronic device that discharges plasma like that. Plasma is usually a gas, which just has an equal number of like positively and negatively charged uh, particles just floating in a gas. Uh, but that's probably coming from his body and that needs to get checked very fast. The copper wire. The copper wire, you okay. got it? I got it. Okay, I got you got it. it. Now don't let it touch. Ah, ah it's, ah, it's when you're coming out. That's what sorry, I was trying to tell you before. Okay, now make sure that when you pull it out, you don't pull out the, there's a magnet at the end of it. That was it. You just pulled out. Okay, oh God. I was okay. not expecting it. Don't what put do it back do? in, what don't do put it back in. That, that's a lot of pus or a lot of whatever. Like that's um that's some serious medical emergency required right there. The copper coil makes a lot of sense though. They're used in pretty much everything, like inductors, transformers. I mean, uh, copper coils are very, very useful. Whenever you send current through a wire, it produces a magnetic field around that wire. So when you take the one copper wire and you wrap it multiple times and, and, and like just one giant coil, when you send that same current through that coil, the magnetic field that it makes is way stronger. And the more coils that you have in your uh, copper coil, <laughs> the stronger the magnetic field will be. Next. Up. Not complete, dummy. Right here. You got me? Stay put. Nice. Pass. Cool. You, you, you're no benefit at all. Move down to the top. I got this. Okay, I'm sorry. Am I in your way? There's lamps being made right now that detect where your eyes are relative to a desk, and they'll auto-adjust themselves to give you the best brightness. So just verbally telling like a robot up to move it up or down to move it down, I mean, that's very, very easy technology to have. <laughs> I would think he has something way more sophisticated than that, like to help him build these things. Which I guess he does, this Jarvis. Jarvis, you there? At your service, sir. Engage heads up display. Check. Report all preferences from home interface. Will do, sir. All right, what do you say? I have indeed been uploaded, sir. We're online and ready. We start the virtual walk around. Jarvis is not actually an AI, he is a UI, which means that everything that Jarvis does is controlled by the user. And artificial intelligence would be able to do things by itself without any sort of user input. But Jarvis can only do what Tony tells him to do or what Tony programs him to do. And I mean, everyone pretty much walks around with some form of UI in their pocket. Like iPhone users have Siri, um, and there's Google Assistant. I mean, that's basically what UIs are. And three, two, one. Yeah. 
What's really cool about this is in the first iteration of the Iron Man suit that he built in the cave, he had to like go on his arm and like click a few buttons and then he was able to uh, fly. But over here, all he has to do is like just gesture with his hands or just think about it. And this technology already exists today. I mean, for prosthetic patients or patients who have like lost their limbs, their neurons are still very much active. So even though you don't have an arm, your brain still thinks that it's there. So they can put these devices on their shoulders or on their whatever limbs are missing. And if your brain thinks that you're moving them, you'll actually be able to move your hand, which is very, very cool. So the fact that he's able to do that um, without clicking any buttons and just thinking about it is legit. Sir, there is a potentially fatal buildup of ice occurring. Go on! It is possible for ice to develop on the outside of the suit like that. It happens on planes actually quite frequently, but it would have to be very, very cold. The reason that ice would develop is because the higher you go in altitude, the lower the air temperature around you will become. And the temperature difference of where he just was, like inside of a heated house, and like literally within two seconds, he's up uh, getting frozen. I mean, he would probably get hypothermia before any anything else happened. Get it. Supersonic. I got a lock. Going supersonic means that you have gone beyond the speed of sound, which in air is going to be about 340 meters per second. I don't know the requirements for going supersonic um, in air when it comes to any sort of like military vehicle. I just know that current uh, fighter jets can do it. So I'm not sure if a Iron Man suit or an exoskeleton like that can achieve uh, supersonic speeds. While he is maneuvering around in the air like that, going up and down and just launching himself at like crazy, crazy speeds, he knew to have some sort of way to not pass out because e even the uh, fighter pilots inside of those jets are wearing masks so that they have a current, or sorry, so that they have a steady supply of oxygen. And he, Tony might be able to integrate that into the suit itself, but I can't imagine where he would put it. Shame the government didn't approve them. There's so many applications for causing short-term paralysis. That is a pretty diabolical device over there. Certain frequencies of sound can be emitted that will cause dizziness and nausea and uh, disrupt your body's ability to maintain equilibrium. I'm not sure about paralysis. Like I don't understand how that can paralyze somebody for a period of time, but. Uh, very much you can make uh, sound a weapon and it can really cause some, it can rupture an eardrum. I mean, you can do some serious damage to someone's inner ear and put them in extreme amounts of pain. To be able to just walk around with that device in your hand, I mean, I know he's using protective uh, equipment when he's operating it, but I mean, I can only imagine like why that wasn't approved. That's, uh, that, that's pretty horrible. Overall, I still love this movie. Iron Man is amazing. Robert Downey Jr. is awesome. Can't wait for Endgame to come out. It's going to be great. The only thing I can't wrap my head around is how Iron Man is able to fly. The suit being bulletproof and having weapons in it and having the super strength. I can get my head around that, you know, surprisingly, but I can. It's just an exoskeleton that has a bunch of possibilities, but the ability to fly is something I just disagree with. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I really hope it added value to the movie. Like I wasn't trying to debunk Iron Man because I really love it. I was just trying to explain how much this stuff is real and how incredible the director and producers of the Marvel Universe really are. Until next time you guys, stay fresh, stay golden.